Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. This is our first show of 2011 and we're very excited about another year of great events here in our capital city. We're also excited about the reopening of the Haymarket Theater. You'll recall it's been under renovation since a roof collapsed last summer. And joining us is Artistic Director Tom Crew. Tom, thank you for being thank here. Thank you for having me. I like the beard. This is not your normal look. It's no. for a role. This is for a role in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead, which I'm directing and acting in. And we decided it would just make me look a little different and a little uh, zanier. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. We'll talk a little bit more about that show later. But first, let's get, get to the theater. Um, you were there when the mishap happened. Mm -hmm. Tell us exactly what happened and what, what it was like. Well, we were rehearsing Fiddler on the Roof and with the kids. We had about 30 kids there. And about a quarter to four, we heard this big thump. And uh, we just figured they were working on the roof, so we figured it was something with roofing. I don't know anything about roofing. And we finished our rehearsal, got the kids out of there. And at 4.15, there was a huge thump and I was actually in the office and the whole building just shook and I ran out and I saw that there's water just going everywhere and uh, we evacuated the fire department was there within 10 minutes and it was it just happened so fast very fortunate no one was hurt no one was hurt no um, and uh, I actually kind of wrote a piece about that because the fire department did such a good job of getting us out of there and when by the time I got out of the building it was already ripped off so they did a very conscientious job in getting us safe and out of there. And the cause? The cause, from what we were told, is they were finishing a roof, they're putting a new roof on, and they were putting ballast all in the same spot. And then the, just the combined weight of that just cracked a beam, and that beam hit a water main, and so then there was tons of water damage after that. So, well, how did you manage to keep the Haymarket Theater going without a home because I know you did four productions. We did, we did. When you were out of the building. That's right. Um, well, the community really stepped forward. First of all, Speedway gave us a space that we could actually have our office in and we were able to do some rehearsals there. Then Lincoln North Star helped us out and we did our first production, Fiddler on the Roof, which we were actually producing at the time when this happened. And so that was our first production. Then we looked at uh, Leffler. We did two shows there. And finally, the University of Nebraska let us do Christmas Carol there. And also in the meantime, you just, it's just not about performance space. You have to rehearse. So um, we had a couple churches that came through and helped us out. So, And also the administrative functions as well. You've got to have you know number to call for tickets and, mm -hmm, and that's all right. of that. So. And that's where Speedway helped us out and, and donated a space for our office. And we've been there for almost six months now. And of course, website. Facebook, those things all help in keeping people informed on where you are mm -hmm. and what you're doing. So Right, and the Journal Star has done a number of articles and the uh, local television stations as well. So tell us about your new home. <laughs> Same address, but a different oh, look maybe? <clears throat> it's going to be beautiful. Um, our board president, Elizabeth Govarts, has really headed this effort up. And uh, we got a brand new lobby, and it's refinished. And we got new carpeting, new paint. Um, the office is painted and the uh, bathrooms are redone. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, I'm anxious to see it. Um, <coughs> sort of kicking things off with a, an opening fundraiser called The Lonely Book, mm -hmm. um, January 20th and 21st. And uh, so hopefully that'll get people reacquainted with the space. And tell us about, uh, it's time to talk about your big show, the mm -hmm. first big show, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Yes, uh, this is actually myself directing it and I uh, have a part in it as well. We have a bunch of dancers that are in it and other uh, acrobats, actors. Uh, we got youth actors in there. It's very eclectic. And uh, the two stars, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, are Lee Willett and Larry Moda. And us three did a show last year called Orphans. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of our baby. And so we decided immediately after that was done what would be our next project. And we decided this one, which uh, when you see it, it's very, very ambitious. And it's a lot of fun. It sounds like a downer, of course, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. It's not. But tell us, <laughs> tell us the basic plot. Uh, the basic plot is the two minor characters in Hamlet are now the major characters. And they have found themselves in this, they start out in, their, in a forest, basically. They don't know how they got there. They just know that they have to follow what they, they think is why they're there. And they just remember one thing, which is we have to go to the court. Uh, then enter the player, who I play, and our merry band of tragedians and we basically 
are manipulating the environment. We're leading them. And so there's lots of farce, slapstick, uh, very clever wit. And it's only at the end that you get kind of slapped across the face with them dying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's coming up uh, February 17th through the 20th and 24th through the 27th. 477 mm -hmm. 2600 is That's the right. number for the Haymarket Theater, haymarkettheater.org. <laughs> And also you're getting ready now to bring all the kids back in for mm -hmm. the Nebraska Youth Theater. This has been a very successful, uh, successful effort for you. Tell us um, what, the, what the Youth Theater has coming up. We got Schoolhouse Rock and we got 30 kids doing that. And then we uh, start today actually, The Merchant of Venice. That sounds pretty heavy for mm -hmm. kids. It is, it is, but it's one of my favorites. I've done it before, I know it inside out. And we've got a group of kids that are veterans. They've been doing this for six, seven years. Many of them have done Shakespeare for, this might be their sixth or seventh play doing Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. So we felt we could really pull this one off. And tell us about the classes then that you have. Uh, we have beginning acting classes. We'll be doing some tech theater classes. We're looking at doing some makeup classes. And we also have a class called Acting on Camera. All right. Um, you also are going to be hosting a Flatwater Shakespeare mm -hmm. Company's performance of Angels in America. That's coming up in April. Mm -hmm, that's right. That's with uh, Bob Hall, Flatwater Shakespeare. and it's our fourth collaboration, I believe. And it's nice, um, you know, when you were without a home, um, you've got other theater companies coming in to do pieces at the Haymarket. Mm -hmm. The theater community seems to be uh, very unified in this community, working with each other to, mm -hmm. to, to make good things happen. That's right. Um, we all work together. A lot of us do shows at other venues. I do shows at the Playhouse. I have, I do shows with Cricket Cut Piece. I've done many shows with Flatwater. And so we all help each other out. We help each other out with props, um, space, and uh, it's, we're a real tight community. All right. Tom, thank you very much again. Thank Rosencrantz you. and Gildan Stern are dead, coming up February 17th through the 20th and 24th through the 27th. You can find out about all the great um, activities coming up at the Haymarket Theater at 477-2600, and the website is Haymarket Theater, that's R-E mm -hmm. on theater, haymarkettheater.org, and Tom, um, we're looking for great things there in your, in your brand new space. Thank you. All right. Pershing Center has a busy year planned for 2011, and we'll have details when Out and About continues. When you're a garbologist like me, Dr. Ari Cycle, you get asked a lot of questions. Here's a common one. How much of my family's trash is recyclable? The answer? A lot. Newspapers and aluminum cans are just the start. You can recycle cardboard, junk mail, magazines and catalogs, as well as glass, tin, and plastic. Your trash can go from this to this. On behalf of your trash hauler and our planet, thanks for recycling. Welcome back to Out and About. As our new arena begins to take shape, Pershing Center continues to stay busy. Tom Loren joins us with a look ahead to 2011. And Tom, we're gonna start off by catering brides. We are. We've got a, a terrific bridal fair there with kind of one-stop shopping for all your bridal needs. It's a terrific time to come down. You can see caterers, you can see dresses, you can figure out where you want to go on that great honeymoon. You can talk up to the limo guys and see if you want that bus limo or do you want the one that's, uh, you know, an old Cadillac, whatever you can do. And there's all these great things to see. It's a fun day. It's not just for the brides, you know, the, the mom, even the grooms can come by and get some great information. Um, it's, you know, starts in the afternoon at, uh, I believe it's one o'clock. And noon, uh, noon, mm -hmm. noon till four. And uh, there's just so many things to do there. Sample some cake, do all those kind of things. It's a fun afternoon. All right, and KFOR has been doing this for a long time, one of the longest running bridal shows in Lincoln. So go check it out on Sunday, January 16th. Then you're going to have a, a lot of uh, middle school musicians coming in for a big concert on the 20th. We do. Every year we get to have the LPS Middle School Instrumental Festival come in, and there's an orchestra and a band, and, and it's what talented musicians. It's great to watch these kids all the time. They come in, they practice during the day. They've been practicing back at their schools throughout uh, the months leading up to this. They put on a wonderful performance. Uh, they spread out throughout in three different sets across the main floor. Uh, parents are proud, grandparents. It's just a very nice event, and we hope a lot of people come down and enjoy that. And music education is so important for it, kids that age. It really is, you know, and it's a great touch point for a lot of kids. That's where they really get, you know, a, a lot of affirmation there. It's certainly great, you know, ties in with math. It's just a, it's just a fun event. My, uh, some, one of my kids was in it, and uh, as a parent, we were very proud to see that happen. All right. 
Seventh Annual Great Plains Eight Ball Shootout. Lots of pool coming up uh, one of the weekends in January. Yeah, up on, uh, we're going to do it in the main floor this time. About 40 pool tables up there. It's an eight ball shootout. It's uh, a lot of the leagues that happen here in Lincoln will come by and do their championships here. It's really, you know, when you sit up in the arena, you can look down, you can watch 40 different guys playing pool. It's really something different. You need to kind of come in and, and check that out. Uh, they play some very high level of, uh, of pool. Uh, eventually, it leads to the Midwest Tournament, which happens in April, and from there, they send players on to Vegas to the championships. So it's uh, uh, it's really kind of unique and, and it certainly draws in a lot of great people. Where do you get all those pool tables? Uh, you know, the distributor, the local guys here, VVS, works with a, uh, a manufacturer and they bring these tables in. They can set them up. They'll set them up Friday morning and be ready to play about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday afternoon. Wow, that should be that should be fun. Also, the big leagues of pro rodeo coming coming to Pershing. PRCA, one of the best uh, rodeo groups out there, comes in, and, and this is top-notch rodeo. This is not just bulls and bronx, which you know is popular, but this is everything. This is you know roping and saddle bronx and everything. We bring in about 60 to 80 truckloads of dirt, put it across the floor in Pershing, get all the gates up. Diane, this is this is top-notch rodeo, mm -hmm. and there's no better place to watch it. You can sit in the front rows of Pershing there, you know, the dirt will fly up. You can even have a cowboy end up getting bucked off into your lap. But there's great <laughs> sight lines all the way along, uh, and, and the, 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 you know, the rodeo cowboys and cowgirls that come by are from all over the nation. Uh, this is one of the stops. They build up points towards the national championship. Uh, Top-notch stuff. Our promoter, uh, Wally Mossberger out of North Dakota, does a terrific job. He has some of the best stock in the country. Oftentimes, the bulls and the, and the horses that he has do go on to the national championships because it's not only the cowboys that get points, but it's the stock and the best stock points go on and, and do great in, in the nationals. Sounds like spectators may need to sign some sort of release for them. <laughs> you know, it's almost to that point. Plus, you know, if you're a parent, you know, there's always that chance you can win that mutton busting for your kid. And what parent doesn't want to strap their kid to a, to a sheep? And give them a ride across the uh, the main arena. So I have never heard of that. <laughs> I think you made that up. Nah, that's one of those fun halftime things. <laughs> All right, Elmo comes back with his Healthy Heroes show coming up in February. You know, Sesame Street has been here for so many years, and it's terrific. We get to see the parents, you know, come back who saw Sesame Street as a kid, and they bring their children, and and you know, it's that's it's that bonding experience. And Sesame Street always stays very very relevant. You know, when we talk about healthy mm -hmm. heroes, they're going to talk about healthy eating, and and so it's. It's not just an entertainment, it's, there's a little bit of education. You know, the parents know all the characters and the characters have, you know, it's kind of that dual level thing. So mm -hmm. the kids get it, but the parents also do too. A little nostalgia. Four for great parents. performances, you know, Friday night, two on Saturday and one on Sunday, 10.30 on Saturday and two o'clock on Saturday. Um, it's, just a, it's just a very fun event. There's a nice range of prices, and we hope a lot of people come by and see that. You know, it's just one of those rites of passage that you have to take your kids to Sesame Street. Tell me about the sunny seats. Have kind of a special deal. There's some special deals that are up front. They get a little more access. Sometimes they can get backstage, do a picture, some of those things. But it's the it's a very close seat. It's a little more of a premium price, but it's you know it's a great experience. And you know those are the kind of things I remember taking my kids uh, to Sesame Street, but it was in Indiana at the time, and. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it and those kind of things you never forget. All right. Well, I know things have been a little uh, slow in the concert industry with the national economy the way it is. Um, you look at things to kind of recover this year? And we do and think it's going to be much better. Um, you know, we're starting to see some of those mid-level acts come back out. They really literally stayed in last year and maybe recorded or did some of that because it, it's the economy was tough. We do see it starting to get better. Uh, that top level of concerts, the Lady Gaga's, Justin Bieber, all those type of things are still doing strong, but there's a gap from that size down to some of the things we're doing. We hope to see that start to fill in. I know of a couple concerts we'll have yet this spring that will start to fill that up, and we're kind of excited about that. Not quite ready to announce them yet, uh, but we do see it going in the right direction. So we'll be back and be strong into the concert business pretty soon. All right. So you, overall, you're looking for a good year? I do. I think we'll have a good year. Um, you know, we don't have roller skating this year. We don't have Special Olympics. So we'll find some other things to fill in some of those things this summer maybe do another festival, that type of thing, but it's still exciting. Still lots of questions about with the new arena, what will happen to Pershing, and I imagine right. those discussions about the future of our 
purging facility will continue. We will. We'll continue to have those discussions. You know, we look towards the future, and, and you know, we, we are booking the, the arena uh, purging through 2014, which means we get to do USA Roller Sports there one more time in August mm -hmm. of 2014. We don't know what's going to happen beyond that point yet. We'll still have those discussions with the city about who the management company will be, how we, do, how we put all those things in place. But I would think maybe by the end of 2011, we'll have a pretty good sense on at least some direction to go to on those things. All right. Folks, if you want to check out any of the great shows happening at Pershing, pershingcenter.com is the website. And uh, give us, I know there's a local box office number, 441-7766. 7766. You can't buy tickets there, but you can certainly get a lot of good information. Okay. And then they'll put you uh, back in touch with TM. And 800-745-3000. That'll get you right into Ticketmaster. And it's a, it, it's a nice way to do it. You can either do it on that way or online. All right, Tom, great job. And we look for lots of fun at Pershing in 2011. Thanks, thanks Dan. It's going to be a great year. When we come back, we'll take a look at more great events happening throughout Lincoln. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy-saving tips like this, visit us at LES.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. Welcome back to Out and About, and Jeff Mall joins us now from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Jeff, we've got two great Lincoln traditions coming up in February, starting with chocolate. Yes, the 25th anniversary of the Chocolate Lover's Fantasy, uh, featuring 18 chefs this year, featuring all kinds of chocolate things. I mean, chocolate fountains, chocolate cakes, chocolate pieces of candy, and a lot of different variety. The first time I ever had a chocolate-covered potato chip was at the Chocolate Lover's Fantasy. Right, and there'll be a great chance this year with a silent auction and, and raffle prizes and so forth. So a good date night, grab some other couples and head down to the Chocolate Lover's Fantasy. And we should say it's a benefit for the historic hay market as well as Cedars, yes. which does an outstanding job. The second event we always look forward to in February is the Abraham Lincoln Birthday Celebration. This year we're doing a theatrical performance, Abraham Lincoln Carved in Stone, and I get to talk about this one since I've been working on this it. This is yours. Richard Marlette is a Chicago actor. He was here uh, to do this show for the Nebraska Repertory Theater one night in 2009. And he's been working on the show, making revisions, improving the show, and he's going to bring uh, back the show for one performance at 2 o'clock. Sunday, February 13th at Lincoln Southeast. They have a beautiful new theater there. Yes. Of course, this is all free. Um, he has written this one-man play using Abraham Lincoln's own words, so it's going to be really uh, historically accurate. Uh, we'll be reception afterwards. You can meet Richard. We'll have some birthday cake for the president, and Chris Sayer will be Yo, there to wonderful. play some music. So wonderful. A great afternoon, Saturday, February 13th. And it's now... Also, yes, it's also a really good opportunity, I want to point out, too, for students across the city to get a great education on the history of Abraham Lincoln. Absolutely. It's a wonderful... And have you seen the new theater at Southeast? I have not. It's, I've heard a lot about it. It's really terrific. Good. It's beautiful. Good. So, All right. Back to theater. Dixie Swim Club. Do you know anything about this play? I've heard a little bit, but I... I'm thinking you maybe have a little bit to do with this Dixie Swim Club. Can you yes. can you give us a little idea what's going on? This won't happen very often, Jeff, but I'm actually <laughs> in this show. Uh, Dixie Swim Club at the Playhouse is about a group of five women who run a college swim team, and they get together every year and give each other support and trouble and all kinds of... There is no, there, we don't wear bathing suits in this, I just want you to know. There is some implied skinny dipping, but There's we do not... There's implied skinny dipping. Implied skinny dipping. Is this a comedy? It is a comedy with a comedy with the heart, let me put it good, that way. So uh, we are just having a wonderful time rehearsing. I want to mention my fellow actresses, Sharon West, Mary Boland, Margie Ryan, and Karen Jordan Anderson. Kirk Monismith is directing us, and we, like I said, we are having a ball. I hope the audience has as much fun watching us as we have doing the show. So Sounds like fun. I hope so. <laughs> Tell me to break a leg. Break a leg. Well, please, please break a leg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, two big shows coming up at uh, Nebraska Wesleyan. Yeah, uh, Seafarer at uh, Nebraska Wesleyan is the story of James Sharkey Harkin, an alcoholic who moves in with his blind and aging brother. 
From that comes a poker game, a stranger comes onto the scene, and this gentleman's life completely changes as a result. So they're saying for mature audiences, so keep that in mind as you consider this production. And the next one sounds like it's just as cheerful. <laughs> Dead Man's Cell Phone, the story of a cell phone. This is a 2008 comedy, the story of Gene. Oh, this one is a comedy. Yes, okay. this one is, right. but it's got a little twist to it. Uh, Gene is sitting next to a gentleman in a theater, and his phone keeps ringing. Uh, she decides, I'm going to pick the phone up myself finds out the gentleman has passed, he's dead, and she decides to dig into his cell phone a little bit and find out what this guy's life is all about, and she gets kind of pulled into a family twist of events, so a fun event. I would hate for someone to start looking at my cell phone. Uh, all the texting you do? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I that would be couldn't imagine. All right, Tada's got another um, fabulous new musical coming up, and this one they're going to take out of their facility mm -hmm. and into the Johnny Carson Theater. Yeah, thanks for Bob Rook for bringing Happy Days, the musical, to Lincoln, Nebraska. The story of Richie Cunningham and the entire Cunningham family, uh, the gang at Arnold's, and all the things that happened in 1959 Milwaukee. And in fact, I've been tapping the Happy Days theme this entire day because this is exciting. We mm -hmm. watched the show on TV. There was a great book, and the book was originally written by Gary Marshall with music and lyrics by Paul Williams. A couple of legends. Yes. This should be a lot of fun. All right, more at the Lead Center. We've got really three outstanding shows coming up, starting with the greatest American violinist. According to the Boston Herald, Joshua Bell is the greatest American violinist right now. I've seen now. pictures of him. He looks really young. Yeah, he is. He is. And he's a featured soloist with every leading major orchestra in the world. He's a Grammy Award winner, featured in the Oscar-winning film The Red Violin. If you haven't marked your calendar yet for this event, please take a look at the screen and put this one down because it's kind of a must-see entertainment in Lincoln, Nebraska. I understand there's a few tickets left for Blue Man Group, which has been called one of the most delightful performance pieces ever staged. Wow. Well, yeah, the Blue Man Group. I mean, we're kind of the Blue Man Group today with our blue on, but that's a fast and furious theatrical extravaganza is what they describe it as. Comedy, music, and a lot of techno and technology brought to the but to the uh, big stage there in Lincoln. All right, we can't get uh, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi but here, but uh, uh, but we do have the next best thing. We do. Eric and Carmen have actually been putting on uh, this production for over 18 years and over 9,000 shows across the country, across the world. It's great music, comedy, fun. Of course, you mentioned Dan Aykroyd and Jim Belushi, the original Blues Brothers, but they've taken this to a whole other level, and you'll actually think you're watching Dan and Jim on stage. All right. <clears throat> the event center is starting off with a bang. Well, they've got a ton of activities coming up in January and February. Kind of a rough and tough maverick rodeo we have coming to the Lancaster Event Center, featuring calf roping, goat tying, steer wrestling, pole bending, and barrel racing. It's a pretty complete rodeo event. All right, then 20, another 25th year anniversary for the Toy and Buckle Show. Yeah, one of my favorites of the year because I can pick up a lot of the old toys I had as a kid. They have over 180 tables of collectibles featuring tractors, trucks, cars, Matchbox, Hot Wheels, Barbies. Uh, that's what caught my it's eye amazing. was the Barbies. Yeah, Love my Barbies. Still hoping to get that Barbie Corvette, I'm sure. <laughs> this would be the place to do it. All right, the Women's Expo coming up the 22nd. Um, of course, this caught my eye. They have both a chocolate fountain and a cheese fountain. <laughs> so pretty no. excited about this one. It will be fun. It's an unrivaled shopping experience for women with makeovers, massages. Massages? And, yes. Oh, I'm there. Do you do the cheese fountain before the massage or after? I th simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> be kind of fun. Head out to see the third annual Women's Expo. Great date night or date day for women in Lincoln, yeah. Nebraska. Girls, girls day out. That's right. All right, the Black Powder Gun Show. I noticed this one also has uh, crafts and trade goods as well. It does. Of course, the Black Powder Guns are on display for sale as well as attendees can look for the American crafts from early American history as well as trade goods as well as the events. So. All right. The Pat Egan Boat Sports and Travel Show. This is legendary. It is 150,000 square feet of boat, sport, and travel. Get you thinking about summer. Not to mention the wacky stuff, too. You've got the water skiing squirrel and a man that looks like Santa Claus with a goose. Yes, the goose man, Paul Messerschmidt, is who you're referring to. And this year, something new is the 2011 Lincoln Golf Expo. So uh, you can be thinking about golf featuring clinics, golf courses, and much, much more uh, to do with the outdoors. All right. And then uh, we also have uh, the next weekend, the home built, Nebraska Builders Home and Garden Show, 280 exhibitors, exhibitors at this. 39 years of the Home and Garden Show in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thanks to the Home Builders Association of Lincoln, Nadine Condello, and her entire staff for what they do. 
a uh, great way to kind of get an idea for your building and remodeling needs, uh, both on the lawn and in your house and around your house, and a lot of kids' activities and seminars for the event this year. And don't forget your can of food for the food bank. That's right. All right. We're going to end up today with some music. Aubin Music is having a sing-along, and this looks really fun. Alice Parker is a living legend. You smile because I think just the fact that you can sing along with Alice Parker at this event, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's, it's, it gives you the experience and the joy of singing together as a community. And of course, she's a living legend, as you mentioned, Alice Parker. A great chance to get out and find out, do you have a voice? Can you sing? But Regardless, it's just a fun, fun, warm event. I just count on everyone else drowning me out. Right, just so. go really low with it. All right, and then uh, another Aubin Music uh, uh, extravaganza, the St. Olaf Choir, which is just one of the one of the best college choirs in the country. Their history is root back to 1912, and they're out of uh, Northfield, Minnesota, become one of the most celebrated college choirs in America. And I know there's a lot of students across the country that really vie to get into this university because it's just a wonderful musical experience. Coming to Lincoln, Nebraska. All right, and then the symphony's got a big concert coming up the first February, or the first Friday in February, and the Youth Symphony joins them for this one. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting marriage of the two organizations uh, featuring Mozart's famous opera, Don Giovanni, and uh, music from Schubert, Beethoven, and Haydn. And it's a great opportunity for the youth of Lincoln and the Youth Symphony to experience kind of the the big experience with classical giants. All right, and then we, uh, and now for something completely different. As always. If you like trumpets, this is the place to be January 23rd. They have invited trumpet players from all over the state to come join the Nebraska Trumpet Ensemble. Now, you have to register by January 7th. Right. But, and you have to attend at least one of the rehearsals. But this should be really interesting to see how many trumpet players you can get on stage at O'Donnell. <laughs> might be a record-breaking night. We talked about Alice Parker doing community participation, but this is a, a musical instrument community participation event. And if you haven't registered, you want to just go see some great trumpet playing, uh, this is high school uh, students and up uh, playing trumpets on the big stage. And uh, it's with, exciting. With some, with some real professionals. Yes, so yes. I just thought that looked really fascinating. Loud. It, it will be loud, it will, it will be, be loud, loud, but I'm sure everybody will sound great, and uh, it is indeed something completely different in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's just a fun month to look at all the fun events we have in our community. All right. If you'd like to find out more, Lincoln.org is the Convention and Visitors Bureau website, Lincoln.org, or you can call 434-5348. And Jeff, it's going to be a great 2011. I'm excited. We had a great 2010, but we have a lot to look forward in this community, uh, too, as far as events and development in our that community. That big air show coming up sounds really exciting. Let's mark our calendars for the weekend of September 11th, 2011, as the Blue Angels will return to Lincoln. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. That's all for today's show. I want to thank all our guests for today, and then thank you for watching. We hope to see you out and about.